What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Simon Tech once again, and welcome to yet another video. I can't get my hands on a 2080 Ti yet, so I decided that in the interim, I would go ahead and lease a second 2080 RTX 2080 through Cutting Edge Gamer. I'll leave my affiliate link with them down in the description below. It's not a sponsored video, however, if you use that or even click it, if you just even click it, I get some credit towards my account, which helps me lease more cards, which then allows me to make more videos about more cards. So that's basically about it. So today, what I wanted to take a look at was the performance scaling or the percentage increase in FPS across the supported titles for NVLink. We're also gonna talk about, of course, the big elephant in the room, which is some of the unsupported titles right after this. Okay, welcome back. So first of all, the test bench is a Z370 SLI from ASRock. It's okay, it's not a great one, but of course it does support SLI and it's going to get us by with exactly what we want here. Now the CPU is an 8700K clocked to 4.8 gigahertz. We have 3200 megahertz memory, 16 gigabytes of it. It's the Corsair Dominator Platinum. And then we are running the games off of an NVMe drive. In particular, this one is the Adata, and I'll leave links, of course, to all this in the description below. And then the graphics cards were, are going to be the Founders Edition versions of this. We did testing essentially at, of course, stock speeds because I just wanted to see how well NVLink, or also known as SLI in the past, has improved over its previous version because now we have a whole bunch more bandwidth that is allotted to the system thanks to the, well, basically larger NVLink bridges compared to the old SLI bridges. Another note about this is, in the past with SLI, you would have a master and a slave card. In this case, with NVLink, that has been taken away, so both cards are able to basically do the workload at full tilt and one card isn't necessarily always going to be lower than the other. Now in my experience across these tests I did notice about a 2% difference in GPU usage but we also had some significant issues with CPU throttling especially in synthetic benchmarks and speaking of synthetic benchmarks let's go through the numbers. First of all in Firestrike we saw a 74% increase in frame rate and that's just the base one at 1080p. And this is the one we saw the most CPU throttling going on or CPU bottlenecking, which throttled the GPU, excuse me. Now, Firestrike Extreme, of course, bumping up that resolution, we saw an 84% increase in FPS. In Firestrike Ultra, we saw an 87% increase in FPS. In Time Spy, we saw a massive 107% increase in frame rate, and there could be some other stuff going on here. The big thing to note is that basically the 8700K is throttling this the entire time. Now we also had, of course, Time Spy Extreme with a 97% increase in frame rate, and I did check out the V-Ray benchmark, which doesn't necessarily need to use the NVLink for anything, but I know a lot of people are interested in that. If you're looking at purchasing two RTX 2080s, you can see a decrease from one minute and nine seconds all the way down to about 36 seconds in that synthetic benchmark, which is pretty impressive stuff if I do say so myself. But all of that doesn't really matter until we take a look at real world games. All of these were live streamed over on this exact channel, so you can always go back through the live stream and make sure I'm not missing anything. But we had Shadow of War, which I Middle Earth is what we're referring to here. In initial launch, we had a lot of issues testing it. It was pretty messed up as far as like optimizations. So this chart, I think I'm gonna have to throw out and do some retesting, especially after looking at it. But as you can see, we did get some significant scaling, regardless of even if we get better performance overall, once we actually go ahead and you know retest the single 2080. Now, Shadow of Tomb Raider is a different story completely. We were able to get numbers and solid numbers for both the single and two card configuration. And here we saw a, an increase of 83%, which is incredible. Uh, so if you guys have ever looked at something like benchmarks for increase in frame rate and SLI configurations, even for the GTX 1080 Ti, the most that you would see there would be about 60%. 
and in a game that's optimized for it right here that's an entire 23 percent and keeping in mind even though it's at 4k ultra we were also still bottlenecking the two cards with the 8700k that story continues on with strange brigade where we saw another 83 percent increase in fps which is just mind blown to be completely honest with you guys because every single time i've looked at sli or something like nv link which used to be sli i was always like it's not really worth it but in this case now if it's a game that's supported and it's a game you play a lot that's some really impressive numbers and increases in frame rate for your day-to-day -day gaming. Now, I did take a look at some other supported games, but we didn't benchmark them. One was Destiny 2, and as you guys know, the hooks don't work quite well, so testing frame rate there didn't really go, uh, go through. However, I was able to confirm utilization of both cards above 90% while gaming at 4K, and I was also able to confirm that I was able to go from medium settings, 4K 60, to completely cranked out settings, 4K 60, locked, no problem. First time ever in that game that I've been able to do that too. So I'm really excited about that one. Now, Dark Souls 3 also does support it. However, you can get a perfect 4K 60 FPS experience in Dark Souls 3 with a single 2080, but it is utilizing both cards and I was able to confirm that so awesome there now some unsupported titles one that surprised me right off the bat was Final Fantasy 15 uh, the latest version of their benchmark and we couldn't get the second card to activate the same goes for Monster World Hunter 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 I said that wrong the same goes for Monster Hunter World and that's a big disappointment because I still yet to get that that game to run really high settings with 4k 60 and i would like to however that being said this is not going to be the solution that fixes it as of right now and PUBG doesn't support it either which uh no real surprise there all in all my impressions with nv link at the end of the day are very good much higher than they were for sli primarily due to well, the titles that it does work for, including Destiny 2, along with the increase in frame rate that I'm seeing being above 80%. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get this silly little 8700K um, delitted and try to cool it a little more and push the, push the clocks a little higher to see if we can unlock a little bit more performance. I dare say that if the CPU wasn't bottlenecking us, we might be seeing perfect 100% scaling in the workloads thanks to NVLink, which is absolutely insane. That's uh, it's nuts. We saw it hitting that in some cases like Time Spy. We saw it getting really, really close. We saw every other game easily just scaling all the way up until basically it started throttling either GPU-1 or GPU-2. Interestingly enough, there is no master-slave relation, so in some cases, I found it kind of funny if you were looking at the GPU usage, GPU-1 would like clock down to like 94% or GPU-2 would clock down to 94% and it would almost level out depending on which card was getting hotter and such. Um, as far as temperatures as well, of course, the one that's sandwiched between the CPU cooler and the second GPU gets a little bit hotter by about 10 degrees Celsius. That can be resolved, of course, with liquid cooling, which in this case, if you're just deciding to go this route, I assume you're going to do. Also, if you decide to go SLI, this might be the time to start looking into the enthusiast platform from Intel which is going to run a pretty penny because even the 8700K is getting bottlenecked here. Maybe the i9-9900K will resolve that. I won't know until we get our hands on it. But I hope this video was helpful and informative for you guys. I finally found my number one favorite thing that RTX does right, which is NVLink. We have not fixed SLI because there's still support problems, but we've gotten almost all of the money's worth out of the second card, which has never happened before. I'll see you next Tuesday. I'm loving it.